Hi, and welcome to Crafts with Ash DIY and Decor. My name's Ashley, and today I am bringing you some of my favorite DIYs from 2023. This video includes DIYs from Valentine's Day, Halloween, Mother's Day, Easter, a bathroom refresh, and Christmas. So if you wanna see what I have in store, stay tuned. Hey, don't forget to check out my other channel, Life with Ash. This channel is a more behind the scenes vlog style channel filled with mama life, mama hacks, cleaning, organizing, hauls, shopping, decluttering, decorating, and even more fun. That channel is all about real life. My hair is always in a messy bun. I live in leggings. I rarely ever wear makeup, and I'm just trying to get through this thing called life. So if you can relate to any of that, jump down to the description box below and click the link to my other channel, Life with Ash, and come hang out with me over there. Before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. If you love what you see, I would love for you to come hang out with me more often. Now, don't forget that this is a compilation video of a lot of videos from 2023. So if you hear me repeat myself a few times, that's why. But let's go ahead and jump into the top 23 DIYs of 2023. All right, so for this DIY, I went ahead and took this long board from Easter last year, and it's like a light blue color. And obviously, I don't want the egg, so I'm just using my level as a straight edge, and then I'm just taking my knife and scoring it a bunch of times. Then look at this, boop, it easily snaps right off. And then I did sand it down, I must have missed that footage. And now I'm taking that level and putting it in the middle of the board and I'm gonna draw a line on the top and the bottom going all the way across to kind of make like those shiplap, shiplap <laughs> lines. <laughs> then I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna smudge the lines to give it that shiplap look. And if you don't like this look, you can absolutely skip this stuff. You step, you do not have to do it. <laughs> All right, next I'm going to take some tumbling tower blocks, again from the Dollar Tree, and I am just going to line them up because I'm gonna create a frame around this, um, this board. So I didn't honestly count how many, but I do know that I did have to cut some down, which you're gonna see here in a second. So right now I'm measuring how I have to cut it down or how much. So I'm just gonna measure that. And before I go ahead and cut it down, I'm actually just gonna start gluing these together. Now I am using um, hot glue for this. I would definitely suggest wood glue, but you know, for video purposes and time, uh, you know, I didn't have time for that. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. So anyways, so you just wanna make sure to keep them straight. I did start, it, start using the edges of the sign to kind of line it up. Then I went ahead and took those two blocks that needed cut down, and I used my miter box and, sh and saw to cut them down. I love this thing, it's so handy. I have a link in my description box. Um, it's from Amazon, of course, where all good things come. And uh, so yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead and sand these down. And then I'm going to glue those to the correct line of tumbling tower blocks. Next, I'm going to take my ivory chalk paint from Waverly, and I am going to paint each one of these um, lines, I guess. And I'm gonna do three of the sides. Remember, you don't have to do the back. We're gonna be gluing that down. It's not gonna be seen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give this two coats. Real quick, I wanna take this opportunity to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Like I said before, my name's Ashley. I am a mama of two, a five-year-old and a three-month-old, and I love everything DIY, home decorating, room makeovers, just, you know, all the fun stuff. I mean, I throw cleaning in there too. Anyways, if you love any of that stuff, definitely stick with me for a while by hitting that subscribe button. And if you love what you see today, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps my channel to grow and I'd really appreciate it. All right, now back to the DIYs. So after my blocks are dry, I'm gonna go ahead and lay them out. That's a very important step. Definitely lay them out before you start hot gluing. And then once I have it looking like how I want, I'm going to hot glue them down. Now you can use a more permanent glue like E6000 or something, but hot glue works for me. And I use Gorilla hot glue sticks. I feel like those are the best ones I've ever used and I've been crafting for a very long time. So uh, yeah, highly recommend. Those are also in my description box too. 
So next, I'm going to take these Conversation Heart picks that I got from Hobby Lobby. These are so cute. I love these. If you saw my haul video, you're going to be seeing a lot of the stuff that I hauled in this video because I kept these DIYs in mind. What I'm going to do is use my miter shears and I'm going to go ahead and cut off each one of those sticks. These are not styrofoam. These are wood. So it's not like the sticks just pulled right out. So after I got them all cut down or cut out, I it had some like overhang left so I just took my knife and just really worked at it now you do need some el elbow grease this was kind of a pain but it did make you know a difference because then you don't have that little piece of wood hanging out now if it was really close like you could see the one above it is like super close to the point I didn't even worry about it I mean I sanded it and that's good enough you know it's 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 just crafting it's all good so once I had all my white posts uh, cut down, I just went ahead and laid out my conversation hearts on my board. And of course, even though I laid them out, somehow I still did not get them even, but that's okay. I think that this turned out super cute. This is definitely my favorite one out of all of them, although they all came out super cute. But then I'm just going to take one of the ribbons that I actually took off of those um, little uh, picks and I'm just going to hot glue it down as my hanger. Now I always like to put tape at the bottom um, of it to hold it down just to give it like a better hold. And then I noticed that it was kind of far away like I really glued it down like low. I don't know why I did that. So anyway, just added some extra glue and this is how it came out and I love it. It is so cute. All right, next I'm going to take this little shadow box from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to take off the back and then I'm going to take off the ribbon that I'm going to take out the other back and then I am going to dump the sequins all over the place. No, I'm just kidding. I actually put it in a bag and to keep it contained. And then to get that wording off, I actually just poured 100% acetone in the thing, let it soak for a while. And then I took my razor and just started scraping it off and it came off so well. Look at this, it's gonna be gone. Look at that disappearing act. So you're just going to scrape it all off and, um, and then you're gonna take some Windex and just kind of clean it. I, of course, did not have Windex with me. I had a baby wipe because, you know, three month old. So that's all I have and I'm just gonna wipe it down. Next, I'm gonna take this really pretty scrapbook paper. Honestly, I don't know where this came from. It might have been Hobby Lobby, could have been Joann's, could have been, I don't know, somewhere. And I'm going to measure that little piece of paper that was in the frame and I'm going to cut a piece down to that size and then I'm going to hot glue it to the back of that frame. I love how pretty that paper is. It's so sparkly. Look at it. All right. Next, of course, you knew we were going to use some conversation hearts. So I'm just going to pour a bunch in my frame. Now I am flipping them over so the wording is facing out. Um, so like it's not looking at me, it's facing out. And I'm kind of just playing with it to see how much more, you know, I don't know. I just kept adding you know more hearts in there until I got it as full as I wanted and I got it pretty full I, I liked it like that I liked it better like that so then I put the backing back on then to complete this I have these gel clings that I got from Hobby Lobby and I'm just going to put two up on the frame and that was it that was the second DIY and I love how it came out all right so I got these candles from the Dollar Tree and at first I did try hot gluing the hearts right to the candle but because it's wax they just popped right off so I thought I would put this really pretty burlap ribbon around and you could see like the hot glue it's kind of popping off but the trick is you just have to hold it there for a while but obviously I did not want to have to do that with every single sweet you know conversation heart so I'm gonna go ahead and put like kind of wrap it now I'm only going I'm only putting conversation hearts the width of this ribbon I hope that made sense but you'll see here in a minute so after I had that down <laughs> you guessed it I'm just gonna take the conversation hearts and I'm just going to start hot gluing them all the way around now I did consider only doing one row at the bottom but I kind of thought it looked weird so I did end up doing three rows and you know I just kind of made sure that the words were facing out and that no two colors were near each other so you know I just 
I loved this. I thought these were probably another one of my uh, favorite DIYs. I th thought that these came out super, super cute. Now, of course, they're decoration only. I'm not actually gonna light them. I don't really light these kind of candles anyway, so no worries there. And so look how cute this came out, and I loved it so much, I decided to make two. Boom, YouTube magic. Okay, now it's time for the last dupe from Kirkland's and of the video. If you're still with me, you are the real MVP, my friend. All right, so I have this Chunky Bunny that I got for $5 at Target last year, but I'm pretty sure they have them this year. I am going to go ahead and section off right kind of above the tail uh, with some painter's tape. Now I'm going to take a foam brush. I'm going to paint my... The, just the top of the bunny with um, the Waverly Antique Wax and then I'm going to wipe it down with a baby wipe and this is going to faux stain the bunny and then I'm going to do the same to the top and the edges as well but I'm going to stop at the painter's tape. After that's dry, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my tape, and then I'm going to put the tape at the top of the, or I should say the bottom of where the stain is. You can see where the stain meets the natural wood. Then I'm going to paint the bottom of my bunny with ballet slipper paint. Now you can use any color you want. I'm really big into like the book, blush or pastel pinks for spring and Easter, so that's what I'm going to do. Once that is completely dry, I am going to remove the tape, and then I'm going to hot glue this little cotton ball to the little tail part. Next, I'm going to take a kind of smaller popsicle stick. I'm going to cut off a little rectangle, and now I'm gonna sand it so this the corners are rounded a little bit. They're not super, super round, but I just rounded them off a little bit. And then I'm going to paint this with my Waverly Talk Paint in Ivory. Now I lost the footage here, but I did go ahead and poke a hole in that little piece with my crocodile. And now I'm just going to take a black uh, Sharpie and just write the word hop. Now on the original it said hoppity, but I'm not really into hoppity, so I just stuck with hop. Then I'm going to take my um, sand block and I'm going to sand down the edges and kind of on the word too so it's not so bold and black. Now I'm going to take a piece of twine and I'm going to first put it, put my tag on there. Then I'm going to wrap it around the back and to the side so when I tie this bow it's kind of like under his neck and the tag is off to the side. Now I'm going to just kind of tack that down with some hot glue, the tag, so it stays in place. And I did kind of leave my tails a little longer, but that's it to this side and it was so quick and easy Here is the Kirkland's one not bad 1124 that you know, that's not bad But I really love how mine came out and it fits into the style of my home, too. All right, this next dupe actually comes from West Elm, and this is one of my top three of this whole entire video. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with some bottle brush trees. These were just from my Christmas stash, and I hate to use them, but I know I can pick more up at Christmas time. Now, yes, I accidentally left that tag on, but don't worry, as you see there, I did end up taking it off. But what I'm going to do is just spray paint all of them with some orange spray paint. And these, this is how it looks. After they're done, do they look like something familiar? All right, so you probably know where this is going, but what I'm gonna do is cut off the base of my trees. Then I'm gonna take some foliage, and again, I'm just gonna go ahead and make the top of my carrots. This is how easy it was to make these carrots, and these bottle brush carrots are so popular. Now, Dollar Tree does have uh, bottle brush trees out right now in pastel colors for Easter. I cannot find them anywhere. I saw them once like a month ago. Didn't think I needed it for anything, so I didn't get any of them. Then, of course, I thought to do this dupe video and came across these on the West Elm website. And I'm like, dang, I could have used those now. So if you see them, pick them up. I'm definitely going to pick some more up. I think I'm going to make more of these but because these just came out so cute. And I did a couple different sizes. So as you can see, I'm kind of using the wire stem at the top 
um, to attach the foliage to and I'm just using the hole that's already at the bottom of the stem I'm making it a little bigger with that little tool there then I'm just slipping it down and of course I'm using hot glue to secure all of this foliage on there these were so easy to make and like I said these definitely landed in my top three of this DIY video. So I'm just going to continue adding greenery until I feel like it's enough or that, you know, until I like it. And I am using two types of greenery here. I just want to take a second to welcome all of you to my YouTube channel. My name is Ashley, like I said, and I'm a wife and a mama of two. If you like all things home decor, room makeovers, DIYs, room refreshers, home decorating, then this is definitely the channel for you. So subscribe, stay tuned, and hey, if you love what you're seeing so far, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. I truly appreciate it. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and finish this one off with a little twine bow. The original one did not have the twine bow, but I just felt like it needed it. So now I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing with these little carrots. And again, I'm just using that wire that's sticking out to use as a base to glue the greenery to. And seriously, again, so simple. I did forget to mention, now the base that I took off of that first tree and the base that I'm going to take off of that other tree in the top right hand corner, I'm going to keep those near because I'm actually going to be using them in the next DIY and I love that I got to repurpose something. I'm then going to top off the smaller ones with a twine bow as well and that completed these three. Now for the green one that I spray painted orange, I did not think that I was going to use that one because I don't know, I just didn't like how it, um, how it came out, you know, how the color came out. But I did end up going ahead and doing the exact same thing. I was like, eh, I might as well. You know, I wasted it. <laughs> I don't want it or I don't want it to be a waste. I already painted it. So I love how this one came out too. I think this one is probably my favorite. It just looks so cool. Now, I should have probably gone through and sprayed it again to kind of, you know, more thoroughly cover the green, but hey, that's okay. This one came out super cute. So just quickly, I'm just going through uh, to show you that I added some greenery to this one as well. And this was a little harder because there was no wire piece at the top. So I'm literally just like shoving the greenery in there. Now for this, I'm actually going to take and make a big bow. So I'm just going to take this ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to fold it like an awareness bow right there. I'm going to scrunch it in the middle and then tie it off with some twine. Now I am um, leaving my tails a little long of the twine because that's what I'm going to use to just go ahead and tie it to my carrot. It. and oh my gosh I love this it is just so adorable you're gonna have to let me know down in the comments what you think about these bottle brush carrots I love them now I did go ahead and fluff my bow and then cut the tails of the bow in an angle um, just to complete this and this came out so adorable I cannot freaking wait to decorate for spring <laughs> all right here are the ones from west elm they used a bunch of different colors that's not really my thing i like the traditional orange so that's what i went with and here's mine all right this next dupe actually came from overstock and i wanted to make these anyways and then it came up like in my pinterest and i'm like oh my gosh that's what i was looking for so I'm going to make two of these. So I'm going to start off with this sign from the Dollar Tree. And of course I have two. And we're going to go ahead and only use the bunnies. So I'm going to take them off of the sign. Now I'm going to take two small dowel rods and I'm going to faux stain them using the Waverly Antique Wax and a baby wipe. And I'm going to do this to both. Now I'm going to go back to the bunnies and I am going to just add a little bit of ivory paint where I think I'm going to put these in the in my house. It's going to be up against a white surface 
or you know wall or background so I can't really paint these white so because then it would blend into the background so I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit of ivory just for a little pop of color and to add a little dimension so I'm just very lightly dry brushing the ivory on there but I am going a little darker around the edges because you can see that it kind of outlined it and then as you saw I did go ahead and pop off that bow and the little galvanized metal piece at the top keep those uh handy though because we will be um using those okay now i'm gonna take my galvanized pieces and i'm just going to paint those in ivory chalk paint now the only reason why i'm using ivory in all of these diys um today is because i can't find my white chalk paint i know that i have it <laughs> but i i don't know where it is Anyways, now I'm going to take those two bases um, from, the, the, from the trees that I just did and turn it into carrots. And I'm going to clean them up a little bit. And these are going to be the bases for our rabbits. So I'm going to sand them down. And then I'm going to actually take a screwdriver. And there's already holes in the bases. And I'm just going to take that screwdriver to make them a little bigger. And I just keep kind of testing it with the dowel rods. So you can see I'm just, you know, making, you know, I'm just working to make it bigger. I'm cleaning it out. And then once I do get the hole big enough that I can slide my dowel rod in, into it I'm going to add some hot glue on the inside of the hole put my stick in and then add some hot glue around it and I'm gonna hold it there until the glue sets up so it doesn't fall over now don't worry the top of this is gonna be covered so load up on that hot glue you want to make sure that these sticks are secure in that hole Next, I'm going to take some brown paint. Um, I think this is chocolate bar or chocolate from Apple Barrel, but any, honestly, any dark brown paint will do. And I am just going to paint my bases. Now, I only did one coat on the top of the base, and I did about three coats on the side, and that's only because I had to cover the orange, and it still didn't get completely covered, but that's okay. I like how it came out. Now, here's why you don't have to worry about the top of the base because we're gonna take some Spanish moss and we're going to cover it. Uh, now I did wanna paint it brown anyways to make it blend in so orange wasn't peeking through, but this is why it didn't have to be completely covered. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take my Spanish moss and cover both of my bases. Next, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to give my bases a haircut. Basically, I'm just cutting around um, the top of the base. Um, that way, you can still see the side. Now, you can cover the, the whole base if you want, including the sides, but I opted not to do that. All right, now it's time to put our bunnies back together. So I'm going to glue those galvanized pieces on and the bows. And then we're going to put our little decor pieces together. So now I'm going to take one of the bases with the sticks and I am just simply going to hot glue my little bunny down right at the top of the dowel rod, right in the middle of his little belly. I am going to flip it over and I'm going to add some hot glue on either side of the stick and hold it down until it sets up. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other one. Now to give it even more of a hold, I'm going to go ahead and add some duct tape. Now you might be thinking, oh my God, there's blue duct tape on the back. These are not going to be seen. The back is not going to be seen, but you can paint or cover them. It's totally up to you. So here is the old overstock one one for 49.67 and here's my version now let's craft for this first DIY I am going to use one of these cutting boards from the Dollar Tree if you don't have this cutting board you can use any cutting board now the first thing I'm going to do is actually paint this center section with some ivory chalk paint because I am going to be covering it but I knew that if I didn't paint it, all the words and the image and everything will show through. So I'm going to give this two really good coats. 
Now you're going to see here that originally I painted over those little um, studs there, but I'm actually going to be taking those out. But first, I'm going to take this really pretty tissue paper that I also got from the Dollar Tree, and going section by section, I'm going to Mod Podge it on. So what I did was put Mod Podge on the top half of that, that surface. I went ahead and smoothed it out. And then I'm going to lift it up and put Mod Podge on the bottom half and press on my tissue paper and smooth it out. It just helps if you do it in sections because, I mean, I did get a little wrinkling, but it prevented a ton of wrinkling and bubbling. So I, I prefer to do that. Now, this is when I realized, shoot, I really should have popped those things out. So you are going to see me use my... Um, little Cricut tool there to go ahead and pop it out. It was easy. You just got to use a little pressure and pop them out. But, um, I, but I did keep them close because I did end up putting them back in after this step. So once I had all my tissue pushed down, I went ahead and, um, cut it all down and then I went ahead and smoothed it out the best I could and next I'm going to take some Mod Podge and I'm going to Mod Podge over the top so that way it becomes a hard surface and it se makes it seem like that this tissue paper was part of this cutting board all along. So real quick, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for choosing to stop by. Like I said, my name's Ashley. I am a wife and a mom of two, a six-month-old and almost six-year-old. If you love all things DIY, home decor, home decorating, room makeovers, room organization, room refreshers on a budget, then this is definitely the channel for you. So like I said earlier, hit that subscribe button. And hey, if you love what you see today, please Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up because it truly helps my channel to grow and I'd appreciate it so much. If this is your first time here, mention that in the comments so I can give you a proper welcome and if you're returning, you are awesome. Thank you so much for coming back and I truly hope you love what you see. So after I got those little um, things pulled up, I went ahead and took my sanding block and I'm sanding in the down direction to go ahead and get all the excess tissue paper off and this worked perfectly. It gave it a nice clean cut and I love doing this. It was so much easier than trying to get scissors in there and try to cut it off. So definitely recommend sanding this all down. Next, I'm going to take those little pins and I'm just simply going to pop them back in. And I just used the same hole that it came out of in the first place. I could see it a little bit through the tissue paper. So I just popped them back in. So what I am making here is a recipe card holder and this is actually going to be for my mother-in-law so and she loves to cook and she loves to bake so I am going to hot glue a um, clothespin to the top and then my kids and all of her grandkids call her Mima. so I cut this out from my Cricut and it just says Mima's kitchen and I thought that this would be super cute because she can use it as a decor piece but it's also functional as well so I just went ahead and scraped that on I never know what the verbiage is for that and then I'm just gonna peel the transfer tape off and that's it to this. Now you could add a bow, you could add some twine to the top. I just wanted to keep it very simple um, because that's more her taste and that's more what she likes. So uh, after this was down, that was it. That completed the super cute cutting board. For the next DIY, I'm going to go ahead and use this wood blank 
palette sign that I actually got from the Target Dollar Spot, I believe last year. Now, I want to keep the frame around it in the natural wood that it that it is. So I went ahead and taped it off with some painter's tape and now I'm going to give the inside a coat of ivory chalk paint. Now if some of that wood shows through, I'm okay with that. I'm giving it kind of a, I'm not really dry brushing, I'm doing more than that, but I'm just, I'm not worried if it's not completely covered. But I am trying to stay clear of those gaps in between because I didn't want any paint to get in. Uh, the gaps. So I'm just going to give this uh, one good coat. After that, I'm going to peel off the painter's tape. Now you can see that it did not, that the paint on the inside did not go all the way to the side. So I did go in and touch that up with my, with a really small paintbrush. That way it looked nice and painted. While that dried, I went ahead and got this puzzle that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now this puzzle has 48 pieces in it and I found that these pieces were the perfect size. So I was thinking, okay, how can I do this? How can I pick pieces? Because I do need the pieces to actually go together and I needed eight pieces. So I was like, well, I might as well put a chunk of it together. <laughs> so that's exactly what I did. So I put a portion of it together and then I kind of went through and figured it out what I needed. I needed two on top, four in the middle and two on the bottom. I'm making this for my mom and I'm gonna put all of our names on, but I thought I would do like mom and dad on top and then me and my sister and then our spouses and then my two girls at the bottom. So what I'm doing here is just making sure that all of my pieces are correct and I found like the portion that I think is going to fit best. Now these pieces kept kind of wanting to come off so I just took a very very small amount of hot glue and just kind of lightly glued these pieces together just so it was easier for me to paint. And I did not put a lot because obviously, you know, when hot glue dries, it kind of thickens a little bit and there would be a gap and I didn't want that. So you just want a little tiny bit. You can even, and I didn't think of, it, of this till after, you can even flip it to the back, like the image side and tape it all down, tape it all together. Um, that way, you know, it would still be together and it wouldn't move but I didn't think of it till after <laughs> so I just went ahead and used hot glue and you know what it, it, it worked out just fine so after that what I wanted to do because my my the base of that wood piece that I had just painted is ivory I wanted these to be kind of dark and look like wood so all I'm going to do is faux stain these and to do that I'm just going to take a baby wipe and I'm going to dip it in some Waverly antique wax and then I am just going to wipe that all over these puzzle pieces and that was it I only did this once and I did make sure that this get got full coverage um you know that way it looked like wood, but um, it really did look like wood. I really liked how this came out. There's a new day that will come again tomorrow. There's a new day to wash away the pain. There's a new day to take away. Now once those puzzle pieces dried, I went ahead and cut out all of our names on the Cricut. And like I said, I arranged them so I said mom and dad on top and then Ashley and Danielle, which is me and my sister. And then next to our names were our spouses and then at the bottom are Amelia and Charlotte. Those are the only two grandkids as of right now. So, um, you know, I put them at the bottom. So I just went ahead and added on all of our names. Now you can kind of see that it's hard hard to see the um, different you know puzzle pieces and the lines and stuff. So I decided to take a black permanent marker and outline all of the lines in the puzzle. Also, don't worry, I know that the name Charlotte is missing some letters. I do go back and fix that. No worries there. I don't know where they went. Now, this piece I do want to mention was inspired by something I saw on Pinterest. Uh, actually, a lot of these DIYs were, and I just kind of gave it my own touch and personalized it to my mom's taste and into the lady's taste that I'm giving them to for all of these. So after this piece was completely done and the names were on, 
I went ahead and hot glued this puzzle piece to the bottom of the frame. Next, I'm going to take this picture frame that I also got from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to take out the galvanized piece and the stand because we aren't going to use it. And all I want to be left with is the frame itself. I'm also going to go ahead and pop off the ta tabs on there because I am just going to simply hot glue this to the top of the frame. Now, this frame size is a three and a half by five, I, I believe. And it's because the four by six was a little too big, so it wasn't gonna fit, but this was, this fit perfectly. Now there was no glass in the frame because it had the galvanized, so I am just going to hot glue this as it is. Now my thinking was, okay, how's she gonna be able to, to switch out the picture if I hot glue a picture or if I put the picture in the frame and hot glue it down, you can't change it out. So what I decided to do was actually take a clothespin, a really small clothespin, and just hot glue it to the top of the frame. And then that way, she can just clip a photo there. And it still looks cute. It still looks high end. But then she can also switch it out when, when it's time. So after that clothespin was on, this DIY is complete. I love that it's personalized. It has all our names. And I think my mom will love it too. For this next new DIY, I'm going to take this watering can that I got from the Dollar Tree and I am going to spray paint it with some white spray paint. Now we're going to come back to that in just a little bit. But for now, I'm going to take these wooden flowers that I also, I believe, got into like a, gotten like a big pack from the Dollar Tree at one point or another. And on one of them, I'm going to paint them in ballet slipper paint. Another one I'm going to paint in agave. And then this one, I, don't, I didn't catch the name, but it's just some kind of light purple or lavender. And you can see that two of them are the same and one of them is not. So once those were completely dry... I am going to take the bottom of a brush. I'm going to dip it in some ivory paint and I am just going to add some polka dots going around the perimeter of all three of these flowers. I just wanted to add like a little detail to it because I just thought that they were kind of boring. So I just thought that polka dots is cute and fun. So now I'm going to take these mini craft sticks and I'm going to paint each one with some green paint. This, this piece right here, this DIY is going to be more fun and colorful. This is going to be for my grandma, which is my kid's great grandma. And I think she's going to love it. Next, I cut out the names of the great grandkids on my Cricut. So we have Amelia, we have Giovanni, and we have Charlotte. So I'm going to go ahead and put one name on each of the flowers. Now, going back to the watering can, I'm going to go ahead and just take some regular yellow acrylic paint and I'm going to give this whole can except for the top spout, like the part where the water actually comes out of, with two coats of this yellow paint. Now, my kids and all the great grandkids call my grandma Mamu, so I went ahead and cut this out as well. It says Mamu's Garden, and I thought this was so, so fun, and I'm just going to go ahead and put this on the front of my watering can. Next, I'm going to fill the bottom of the watering can with some floral foam. I did have to cut it down and kind of piece it together in there. And then you will see that it is wobbly. So it, eventually I do take the top part off and hot glue it down to the bottom. But I just needed some filler in there. Plus, we're going to go ahead and put the flowers on the stick. So I needed somewhere to stick those sticks. <laughs> Again 
Next, I'm gonna take the popsicle sticks and I'm going to hot glue the flowers on and then I'm going to pop them inside of the watering can. Now, I did do different levels and the Charlotte one, I had a little lower. The Giovanni was like middle and Amelia was a little higher than all those because that's their age range anyways or like age order. Um, Amelia is the oldest. So I just thought it would be cute to do it like that. And then also the Charlotte one is is the flower that's different so that one's in the middle of these two that are the same you'll see <laughs> I I don't know that was just my you know thinking on on all that my thought process so once I uh, had the Giovanni one in I went ahead and hot glued the sticks to the other two and stuck those in my little watering can as well now you can see that it is still wobbly even after I added the um, hot glue but uh, next you're gonna see that I add this green raffia and I'm basically just going to stuff it in and this helped stabilize the foam as well I was gonna do like rain uh, reindeer moss or like that elixir or whatever it is but oh my gosh that would have been so messy I would have been so mad if someone gave me that because it is so messy um, and it's kind of smelly so I but I thought that this was more like fun any whimsical anyways so I'm just kind of arranging it how I like and then I just kind of like felt like it needed just a little more pop of color so all I'm gonna do is simply add a little twine orange bow to the side and I think that that was just enough I have to say I think this was my favorite of them all now after this one are the ones from a couple years ago so definitely keep watching because you are gonna want to catch those and like I said you're gonna see a lot of different styles that you can switch up for each woman so say you want to make this for um, you know a great grandma but they're not that colorful they don't like color then you can make that uh, watering can galvanized and just make the flowers white you can really switch it up but anyways here is the final look of my watering can and I love how it came out So all of these DIYs today are actually going to be inspired by the stencil right here. They are the perfect colors to go into my master bathroom and bedroom. So we're going to get started with our first DIY. So first we're going to start off with this hanging sign that of course I got from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to begin by taking out, off the hanger by just using my screwdriver. And then I'm going to use my heat gun and my little scraper knife thing <laughs> to get off the sticker. Now because there was still residue left over from the sticker, I went ahead and sanded it down to make it a nice smooth surface for when I go to paint it. Now on the other side of this of the sign that's actually the front. I went ahead and took off that um, metal word and then I'm peeling as much as that paper off as possible. This is actually going to be the bottom of what we're making so it's not even going to be seen but I thought that I would clean it up as much as I could. So for the paper I couldn't get off I just went ahead and sanded this down really well so at least it wouldn't scrape up or anything. Next, I'm going to take a smaller brush and use ivory chalk paint. And the ivory chalk paint is what I'm going to be using in this whole video because these are rustic DIYs. So you are going to see a lot of ivory. But to start off with, I'm just going to paint around the edge of my sign. And you'll see why in a minute. Now I'm going to take these rhinestone stickers and I'm going to go ahead and place them around the perimeter of my sign. And I'm going to make sure that the, it goes all the way around so I might have to use two of these strips and then I'm going to take off individual rhinestones to fill in the gaps.
Next, I'm going to take that small brush again with my ivory chalk paint, and I'm simply going to paint over these rhinestones to make it look like they were like beads or, you know, those risers that have the beads on uh, the perimeter and like the edges. So that's kind of what we're making here today. Then after the side was painted, I'm just going to take a bigger brush and I'm going to take paint the top and I'm going to give the sides and the top two coats. Now I'm going to flip my board over and I'm going to use these square, rounded squared beads and it came from like a brain teaser game from uh, the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to simply hot glue four down to make little legs for my riser. Now these do have holes in it so you do want to make sure that you either glue the hole to the actual tray itself or so the hole is on the bottom. Next I'm just going to take my paint and I'm going to paint the little legs and the bottom of this uh, riser as well. Now to give it that nice rustic distressed look, I'm going to take a sponge, I'm going to dip it in Waverly Antique Wax, and then I'm going to kind of uh, just kind of pounce it off a little bit on my mat there so it's not so dark, and then I'm just going to uh, go ahead and put it all around my tray. I'm going to put it on the rhinestones, I'm going to put it uh, on the bottom of the legs and then I'm going to go over the top. Now if this is not your style you absolutely can skip this step and just leave it with the pure ivory but you know me I love that rustic look so I wanted to go ahead and add it. Real quick, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to my YouTube channel if you're new. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. If you don't know, my name is Ashley. Like I said, I am a wife and a mama of two, a six-year-old and an almost eight-month-old. I work from home and I do all things DIY, home makeovers, room makeovers, decorating are my biggest ones, room refreshers, and life hacks and mama hacks. So if any of that sounds appealing to you, definitely stay tuned. In fact, all of these DIYs that you see today will be put into a master bedroom and bathroom refresh video in the future, so you definitely don't want to miss it. Now for the parts that kind of got a little dark with the wax, I'm just taking that ivory paint and just brushing it right over to kind of make it a little duller. And I really love how this turned out. This is gonna be the perfect riser to put in the corner of the vanity in my bathroom. And that way I can set um, like Q-tips and mouthwash and like little decor items on so I'm excited to use it and here's how it turned out and you will see a final reveal at the very end DIY number two I had this jar lid or actually I think it's a candle lid in my stash and then I also had this little glass cup and look at this they fit perfectly together they did not come together but I just noticed that they fit perfectly so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually spray paint the lid with my oil rubbed bronze spray paint and you're gonna see it in my master bathroom when you watch my video when it comes out <laughs> um, that all of my fixtures are actually the oil rub bronze I love this oil rub bronze and it's all over my house so I thought I would spray paint the lid to tie it all in once that was dry I thought I would dress up this jar a little bit by adding some twine around the like lip of the jar. So I'm actually going to double up on it. And my whole point here was, was when you put that lid inside, you can see that rubber piece there. So what I wanted to do was hot glue the twine around so it didn't really stick out or stand out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just kinda use my hot glue to glue it in some places and go all the way around the top of that jar. And then you'll see I am actually going to peel that sticker off at the bottom as well.
Now I thought this jar would be perfect for some Q-tips. My husband uses Q-tips every single day, so I thought it would be nice to have them displayed, but in a really cute decor piece, which is what I wanted to do here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick my Q-tips in the jar, and then to dress it up a little bit, I'm gonna take this jumbo popsicle stick, I'm gonna cut a little rectangle out of it. Then I'm going to sand it down, and I'm going to cut the sides or the points of the sides to make it look like a tag. You'll see here in just one second. So I'm going to cut it in the shape of a tag and then I'm going to dry brush some of that ivory chalk paint on top of it. There's a new day that will come again tomorrow. There's a new day. Next I'm going to take one of the rub-on transfers from the sheet that I showed you earlier and I'm just going to simply rub it on. Now these did work um, really well. The trick is is you want to apply lots of pressure and it does help if you're using something sharp and pointy to rub it on with. And when you peel it off, peel it off slowly, very slowly. And if you see that something is not completely rubbed on, just put it back down and just keep uh, applying pressure and rubbing it on. Next, I'm gonna take my sponge that has the Waverly Antique Wax and I am going to just um, dab it all around the sides of that tag Next, I took another piece of twine. I'm going to wrap it around where the other twine is. I'm going to tie it in a knot and then bring the two ends together. And that is where I'm going to tie a, the tag, or I'm sorry, glue the tag. So I'm going to go ahead and, and bring them together and then glue the tag right on those ends. Now, it did kind of hang funny, so you are going to see that I do end up gluing the actual tag to the glass, which you're going to see in a second. But uh, for now, I'm just going to glue it right to the twine. And then there you go, it goes right to the glass. Now, I did feel like this needed just one more extra touch, so I just went ahead and made a simple bow out of the twine, and I'm going to hot glue that to where all the twine meets in the middle right above the tag, and that's it to this jar. It was simple, it was easy, it was free because I already had everything, so can't get any easier than that. So DIY number three is to hide all of those things that you may need, especially women, a certain time of the month, but you don't really just want them sitting out. So we are going to create a little um, hidden box, so to speak. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a book, any book will do, but the thicker the better, and you're just going to start cutting out squares in the middle of your pages. So I know you know what I'm talking about. You see these all the time in movies or TV shows and probably on YouTube channels. So what you want to do is you want to cut or you want to push as hard as you can so you can cut as many pages as once. Now I am going to warn you, yes, this is time consuming, but it is so easy to do. So I probably cut, I definitely cut like three fourths of this book, probably more. I did not leave very many full pages. And as you can see, I pushed so hard that look at all those pages that I was able to cut out at once. So that's what you want to do. You may have to use your scissors for some of it but mostly you wanna use a very sharp knife and just cut your pages until you have a pretty good, like, hollow space in your book. There's a new day to take away your sorrow. So once you have all your pages cut out, I was trying to figure out, okay, you can see when you open it, it the, the pages move and no, the, the inside's not pretty, but it doesn't need to be because I'm the only one that's going to be seeing the inside, right? So don't judge that. But I was trying to figure out, okay, how can I get all these pages to stick down without going individually and like gluing every single page down? So this is what I decided to do. I took some tape and I'm cutting little strips. I'm putting it on the top and pulling as fast as hard as I can 
wrapping it around the whole bundle of cut pages. So I'm going to go ahead and snip that off. I'm going to do one on either end and then one in the middle. But the trick is you want to pull as tight as you can to keep all of those cut pages together. So because you taped all of the cut pages together, now you can hot glue the whole thing down to the bottom of the book. Then I went through and kind of hot glued pages that I saw sticking up too. Like wherever I saw it was kind of bubbling, I just hot glued it down. After that, I again took my ivory chalk paint and I painted this entire book except for the pages because I still wanted this to look like a book so I left the pages alone but you know I, I went on the insides too so you didn't really see that blue I did cut, paint the bottom then I even opened my book and I painted the blue tape so it blended in with this um with the ivory and you're gonna see after three coats of this you can't even tell that there is tape there. Now, I did dry the paint in between each coat, so that way, um, you know, the paint would stick. But look at this. It blends right in, and you would never be able to know. So I did have the issue, though, of the top cover wanting to pop up. So to kind of fix that, I'm going to show you what I did, but it did take some thinking. So I'm going to cut off a long piece of jute twine. I'm going to triple it. Actually, I guess it would be quadrupling it. So I'm going to fold it in half then, fold it in half again. I'm going to wrap it underneath so the ends are at the top. I hope that made sense. Okay, I'm jumping ahead. Okay, wrap it underneath. And then I was like, okay, but I have to make this easily accessible so I can just open it and shut it. I don't want to have to untie it every time. So what I'm going to do is use Velcro. So I just cut off a very small square of Velcro. And I'm going to, of course, attach them. Then I'm going to measure where I want my ends to meet. I'm going to cut it down. And then I'm going to put the sticky part on the tool, or on the twine, sorry. And then I'm going to hot glue it down. So that's one part of the Velcro. Then I'm going to pull as tight as I can. I'm going to put the other end of the Velcro on to its matching part. I'm going to cut it, put the strings on that, cut it down, and I did apply some hot glue so it would all stick together. Now to hide that, I'm actually going to take this ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to make a very simple bow. It's like an awareness bow that I just took some twine to uh, tie it in the middle. And then I'm just simply going to hot glue that to the Velcro on the top. So I really hope that made sense. Hopefully watching it, you like understood it. Um, it was so easy though, and it it's functional, but yet it's cute. So this is for all those things that you kind of use like every day or those things that you want out easily accessible, but you don't want them really to be seen. So this is a great way to hide those things. So I'm just going to show you here how you could kind of dress it up. Uh, I'm, I'm, you can like stick a plant in it there, but I think where I'm going to put it, I'm going to probably put something on it. So I don't know, stay tuned for that video and you can see how I decorate it. But there you go. You have a really easy box that you can hide all of those things you don't want to be seen in your bedroom or your bathroom. Okay, next we're going to make a little sign, and this really could be used anywhere, not just the bathroom or bedroom, but I have this little house off of a Dollar Tree sign. I've, I've had, you know, I've had this for years, and so I'm just going to go ahead and give it two coats or maybe three coats of ivory chalk paint, just so all that wording is completely covered. After that, I'm going to take another one of these rub-on transfers, and I love it because it says they built a life they loved, and I thought this would be perfect for my master bathroom because, of course, it's for me and my husband. So I'm going to go ahead and rub that on, and I love the fact that it was on a house too. It just kind of all goes together, and I loved it. So like I said, these do go on, but you do want to go slow. You want to apply a lot of pressure, and you want to use something sharp to apply it. Just for a day. 
Now, after that, I realized I forgot to paint the edges of this house, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that now because I want to make sure that it's completely covered. Then, of course, you know I'm going to go in with my sponge and my Waverly Antique Wax, and I'm going to especially pay attention to the edges of this house, but then I'm going to kind of dab lightly in the middle of the house too, and I'm going to take that ivory um, chalk paint and I'm going to lightly brush over that uh, rub-on transfer so it all blends in and it makes it look even more rustic. Next, I'm going to take this frame that I got from the Dollar Tree a while ago. I'm going to use my screwdriver to take out this little clip at the top. And then I'm simply just going to hot glue my little house on the frame. And that's it. So the easiest way I found to do it, though, was to take my hot glue and to put it on the raised um parts of this like the backing just push it down now I thought about adding like a twine bow or something but then I changed my mind I thought that this was perfect as it was but I did want to go ahead and dark darken that frame since I do like darker wood better than lighter wood and this would go better with everything in my bathroom so I'm just gonna go ahead and take a baby wipe I'm gonna dip it in some Waverly antique wax and I'm gonna faux stain the frame and that's it for our next DIY, I'm going to use this little tray that, again, came from the dollar store. I had it in my stash, and I'm going to paint this entire tray with two coats of ivory chalk paint. Next, to add some texture and some detail, I'm actually going to take this twine and I'm going to start where that little hump is on the handle and I'm just going to wrap this around and around and around and around each one of these handles until they are completely covered. And I'm going to do this to both. Next, I'm going to take more of these rub-on transfers and I'm going to rub them onto the front of my tray. Now, that's it to this. I am going to add a little bit of distressing, not much, but going around the perimeter. I didn't really do it inside the tray itself because I'm going to have stuff on top of that, so I didn't worry about it. But I did go ahead and spray this with a clear coat. That way it protects it from water that will probably be splashed on there. I'm hoping that it protects it. I don't know. Time will tell. But that's it to this tray, and I thought that this came out so cute and it was so easy. This next project was actually inspired by something I saw from the Daily DIYer. And yes, we are using another book. And this time I am going to cut out the whole stack of pages. So I just want to be left with the cover. So I think this is going to go on my nightstand to hide all of those things that, you know, I use every night that are easy to reach but I want hidden so we're gonna make a cool box so to do this you want to be left with just the cover like I said and then I'm gonna take some paint sticks and I'm gonna start measuring the sides to the two sides and the long edge of the back of the book now I'm using my miter shears to go ahead and cut this my blade is broken or else it would have made a nice clean cut but I highly do recommend this because it saved me from having to make a trip to my saw and all that but uh, these miter shears do really come in handy a lot I went ahead and uh, measured um, both and then I did go ahead and sand the edges that way it was nice and smooth and then I went ahead and measured the front part after I had everything sanded down I went ahead and hot glued on all of my pieces Just for a 
and then I'm going to paint this entire thing in my ivory chalk paint giving it two coats. Next I'm going to take this picture frame that I got from the Dollar Tree and again by using my screwdriver I'm going to go ahead and take off this little plate in the front but I am going to keep it close because I'm going to use it again in just a little bit. Now they, it did leave me two holes so I just took some spackle and I'm just going to simply fill those holes and sand it down. Next I'm going to flip it over and I am going to take out the um, paper and the glass and then I'm going to use um, a little tool to go ahead and get those tabs out because we aren't going to be needing those. After that I'm going to flip it back to the front and again I'm going to use my wipe and dip it into the Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to faux stain it because as I said earlier I like darker wood so I'm just going to go ahead and faux stain this frame. After that I'm going to flip it over and I am going to hot glue the glass on the inside of the frame although you are going to see it pop out so I'll have to do it again. Then I'm going to take this de rub on transfer from the sheet and I'm going to go ahead and apply this to the middle of the glass and I love this because it says together is my favorite place to be so I thought this was perfect for a master bedroom. Then, like I said, I went ahead and hot glued the glass back in to the frame, and this time I gave it extra glue. So now that that's done, I'm going to move back over to my book, and I am going to distress the edges. I'm going to go a little bit on the cover of the book as well. Not too much, but I am paying attention to the edges and the corners of my book to give it that rustic look. When that's done, it's now time to hot glue my frame into the middle of the book to add just a really pretty decorative touch. Then I thought it would be really cool to use that plate and hot glue it to the front of our brand new box. Now I did notice that the flap just like flapped open so I did go ahead and apply some hot glue to the like binding of the book and to like the paint sticks as you see here. Now you do have to apply a lot and kind of hold it there until the glue sets up but after that you have this brand new box that again you can use as a functioning home decor piece to hide all of your things that you don't want to be seen. I love how this came out and I can't wait to put it in my bedroom. Now this last DIY is so easy. I had this soap pump left over from a purchase I made a while ago. So I went ahead and sprayed the pump itself with that oiled rubbed bronze spray paint. And then I'm just gonna take another uh, rub on transfer and I'm just gonna simply apply it to the front of my soap dispenser and that's it. This is now ready for me to add some soap into and add it to my bathroom. Well, now that all these DIYs are complete, it is now time for the final reveal. What do you think? I pull into your driveway, it's a Saturday night. You look like a million bucks wearing that dress I like. You're smiling, but there's something missing in your eyes. Girl, I can tell that I'm starting off with this soap that I got from the Dollar Tree, and you definitely want to make sure that you get this shape, and you're going to see why in a minute. Now, the first thing you want to do is take off the labels on both sides. This is going to be a two-part DIY. So on the one side, I took my light mocha apple barrel paint and I am going to paint the whole front side with this. Now when you turn it to the side, 
there's like a seam there and so I just painted up to the seam but I gave this about two coats of that light mocha next I took a pencil now I am not good at freehand painting so you're gonna see that I pencil things out and I just want to preface this whole video I am NOT an artist I am NOT a painter I'm not a person that draws so if I can do these DIYs so can you all right so if you have not figured it out we're making the mayor so i am looking at a picture as i'm drawing this so i did like the big squiggly or like i don't know crazy eye and then a circle eye for the other one a triangle for the nose and then the mouth so again just reference a photo it's so easy i had my laptop in front of me and i was just looking at it as i was drawing so now i'm gonna take a permanent marker and just outline everything that I drew on this side with the pencil. I'm going to outline everything but the mouth. So I'm going to also color in this big circle eye. Now, it was supposed to be a circle, but the paint, I don't know, is like sticking up or something, which is why it's that weird shape. But hey, it just makes it even more spooky and creepy. Then I'm going to go ahead and color in the nose. Now, you can definitely use paint for this. I just decided to go with the marker because I just thought it'd be easier. All right, so now I'm going to take some white paint and I am going to paint the whole mouth. And I am going to go and do details to this once it's all painted, but first I need to give this a base coat of the white, and I think I did like two or three coats. If you hear loud children in the background, that's because my husband's getting all, all riled up before bed. <laughs> I don't know, they're having a fun time. All right, so then for that little eyeball, I just took the back of my uh paintbrush and I just put a dot now I'm going to take a fine point sharpie and now we're going to make like the teeth marks so I'm going to just make like a half moon shape this is this might be a little hard for me to explain but you can see what I'm doing here and then I'm just going to connect them in the corners and then I am going to color that middle part in now I do go through and I do outline the mouth with this marker but then I go back with like a little fatter marker and do that because I thought it made it look a little bit more animated like Nightmare Before Christmas. So you're gonna have to let me know down in the comments are you a Nightmare Before Christmas fan? My six-year-old when she was about three went through a huge Nightmare Before Christmas phase. Everything was all about Zero and Sally and she was going to marry Jack and everything. So we have a ton of stuff, but I am making all this decor for my guest bathroom. So that's why I have the soap here. And then I will just incorporate other things that we've collected over the years in that bathroom as well. This is the first time I'm decorating the guest bathroom for Halloween in general, but definitely for Nightmare Before Christmas, so I needed to get some stuff. <laughs> so I thought, hey, why not DIY it? But let me know down in the comments if you are an NBC fan or what your favorite Halloween movie is. All right, so as you saw there, I just made some lines to create the teeth to make it look like his mouth is open. I am going to uh, just color in the middle part here. And this is the fatter marker I was talking about. And I just think that that just, you know, m using this just kind of makes it look a little bit more animated. And then I'm going to put some little marks underneath the mouth. And that's it for this side and then we're going to turn it around and the mayor you know is two-faced so we're gonna go ahead and do the other side so on the other side it did have this writing so what I did was just um, take some Waverly chalk paint in white and I went ahead and painted over it and then I'm going to take my blue color I think this is peacock I, I don't know I just grabbed it not for any reason because I'm gonna mix it with white anyways his the other side of his face this side is like a light blue well in some pictures it's white and in some pictures it's light blue I can't really tell if it's just a super light blue or white but anyways I'm just gonna go ahead and create a color and then just color or paint this side of the soap and again I'm gonna stop at that seam there now to create the face I'm just going to mix orange paint and yellow paint and this is just regular acrylic paint 
and you want it to be more yellowy than orange so it's gonna look like mustard right now there we go so for the eyes i just drew two circles and then i'm going to go ahead and take that paint and color them both in now i did have to do several coats because it was a very light paint but i just wanted to make sure that you couldn't really see the blue underneath So for the nose, I am just going to draw out like a boomerang shape. And again, I'm just looking at a picture and copying whatever I see. So it is truly easy to do once you get started. And actually, it was really fun. I had a lot of fun painting all of these DIYs. Now, I'm just warning you, there is a lot of painting in, in these DIYs. But I promise you... And again, I'm not an artist, but I promise you these were easy. And like I said, I had fun with it. So just get creative. All right, so now I'm moving on to the mouth. I already drew out the shape. So then I'm going to go ahead and do what I did to the other mouth and just paint the inside of it. Now, again, I outlined it with this fine point Sharpie, but you're going to see that I actually go back with the fatter one and outline it again. So in the photo, his teeth kind of looked like gross, <laughs> like dirty. So I figured while I had that white, er, sorry, that yellow paint out, I'm just going to dry brush or not even brush, but I'm just going to dab lightly some of that yellow paint in the mouth and then over the eyes as well. And I thought that that added a really creepy touch because his teeth are disgusting. So now I'm just going to take that fine point marker and I'm just going to make some zigzags and this is going to create the teeth. Now, I again, I had to go over it just to make them a little darker, but also my paint was not all the way dry. So you definitely want to make sure that your paint is dry before you start drawing. Now, then I moved up to the eyes and I'm just simply going to make a smaller circle inside each of the yellow circles. And you want to make sure that those are colored in really dark as well. And then I'm just simply going to add some eyebrows. So I thought it would be fun to just kind of make this a little bit more creepy. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a very little amount, very little amount of black paint on my brush. And I'm just going to dab, dab, dab all over the faces on both sides. Now this is just to kind of make it a little bit more creepy and spooky. And I thought that that did the trick. Then I went ahead and took my marker and I am just going to draw the line over the seams. Now off camera, I did take the pump part out and I spray paint it in black paint, but you're just going to have to hang on for a minute and you'll see the final reveal at the end. Sixth and final DIY, I'm going to start off with this blackboard and this was actually from like that board that has like the pumpkin on it, but I went ahead and cut the top off for another DIY and then did not end up using it. Okay, now this you can skip because I thought it would make more of a uh, impact, but it didn't. So just skip that step. But what I definitely wanted to do was to make this look worn and aged. And so what I'm going to do is take my sand block and I am really going to sand down these edges. What you want to do is bring through that MDF board just like that. 
And so I did this all around my board. Next, I'm gonna take some white paint and a small paintbrush and I am just going to dry brush some white paint all over this sign. Now you wanna make sure that you use a light hand with this and you really wanna dab it off before you start painting and definitely go in one direction. Then I took a wipe and just kinda of wiped it down too to make it not so bright and this was exactly the look I was going for. So this, these next steps, it's gonna be a lot of painting but it was a lot of fun and this is my favorite project besides those jars out of all these DIYs. So just stay with me. I know it might look intimidating, but I promise this was so easy. So I took this container. It was the perfect round circle and I'm just going to trace it on one side, the right side of my board. Then I'm going to make a yellow and orange mixture and you want it to be more yellowy than orange. And then I'm simply going to paint my circle. Now, I used this brush because it was so easy for me to like outline and then paint the inside, but I gave this several coats because I wanted this to be completely covered. Now it looks like a moon, right? Now I'm going to take my pencil and it's going to be kind of hard to see here, but when I outline it with the marker, it'll be more obvious, but I'm just going to create that scene, like that mountain scene that Jack and Sally stand on top of at the end of the movie and like where Jack goes sometimes. And again, I am just looking at a picture and copying it and sorry about all my hair, <laughs> uh, my frizzy hair. Clearly I didn't do it that day. Um, in the shot my bad <laughs> and my forehead so then I'm going to take my marker and here you can see it a lot better I'm just following my pencil marks and then for that mountain you want to make like that um, what do I want to say like that curve you know what I'm talking about if you're a nightmare before Christmas fan you know exactly the scene I am talking about so then I'm just going to go ahead and outline this hill Next, I'm going to go in with my black paint and just paint everything I just outlined. And I am going to paint like the little humps of the hill too. Uh, that way it is black and bold. And I do go in with a smaller paintbrush to get the little curve there of the hill. Now it doesn't look like it here, but it was a little too orangey for me. So to add some dimension and to lighten it up, I did go ahead and take a small paintbrush and I am just simply going to put some yellow paint around my moon. Now my paintbrush accidentally had some black in it and at first I was like, oh no, but then I used my finger to kind of wipe it up and I really loved the look it gave. So you know, because the moon's not like a perfect color. So I just went ahead and put some highlighting in there and just kind of used my imagination. Like I said, this is all you. It's what you want to do and just get creative. Next, I took my Sharpie and I'm just drawing some lines on the hills because in the photo I was looking at, it looked like a fence. Now, the lines, I am purposely not drawing even. I'm kind of slanting them. I'm drawing like wood out of them or sticks out of them. So again, just get creative. And how easy is this? Basically, we drew a circle, we drew a little hill and then some lines, see? So it's actually pretty easy. So now I'm going to take my marker 
and I'm just going to do the bar for the fence. And I wish I would have just stuck with the one, but then I do go and add a second one because that's what the picture had. And I am such a visual person. I feel like I can recreate things if I have like a picture in front of me or a visual of it. I, I feel like I'm really good at doing that. Sometimes I get lost though when I have to, you know, create something myself. Next on my Cricut, I cut out Welcome to Halloween Town. Now this font I actually purchased from Etsy. I will leave the link in the description box below. It was like $1.25 or something. And so I'm just going to go ahead and put that right in the middle of my sign. Next, I'm going to take my paintbrush and I am going to just get a little bit of orange paint and I'm just going to draw some circles. Now, in the picture that I was looking at, the they, these are pumpkins, but they were kind of wonky. So that's why I'm kind of doing like weird ovals, circles. Sometimes there were two next to each other. In one part, there were two spread out. But again, just use your imagination. Now I did color these in a few with a few coats, but if some of that black showed through, I was okay with it because again, these are spooky pumpkins. All right, so after I was done with the pumpkins, I'm gonna take this little skinny paintbrush, I'm gonna dip it in that silver lining, and I am gonna outline the like hill part. Not the part that goes into the moon though, just this bottom part and on the end, you'll see. But I just felt like it needed some highlighting there and I felt like it just needed to be more obvious, I guess. Then I'm going to take that silver lining and I'm just going to draw a cross and then I'm going to draw a tombstone and again I'm just looking at a picture and just drawing what I see. Now to kind of dull down the words a little bit or make them so they're not so bright, I just went ahead and dry brushed that silver paint over my letters. So now we're going to go ahead and finish the pumpkins. I'm going to take my fine point Sharpie and I'm just going to make faces. And some of the eyes are wonky. Some of the mouths are wonky. I just basically, you know, just was creative with it. I don't know how many times I can say that, but honestly, that's just this whole video. I just used my imagination. I looked at the photo, tried to copy it, and just had fun with it. I did, tried not to overthink it. I kind of felt like the cross and the tombstone needed some more dimension, so I'm just dry brushing some black paint. And then you're going to see that I actually do add another cross. And I just did that again by using that silver lining and then adding dimension by adding the black.
The last thing I had to do for this sign was add a hanger and I just used some twine, a lot of hot glue, and I even added some duct tape so I was for sure that the hanger was not going to be falling off. And that's it. For someone who is not an artist, this was extremely easy and fun to make. Was it a little time consuming? Yeah, but was it completely worth it? Absolutely. For the first DIY, this Oh, I can't even, I have no words. This turned out so amazing. So first I went to Hobby Lobby and grabbed a clay pot. This ended up being 250 because it was 50% off. Then I just had my husband go in the backyard and pick me up a large stick. I saw down the bottom, so it would kind of squeeze into the hole of the clay pot. Now you can see there that I already have some tumbling tower blocks um, positioned. I glued those on there right next to the hole so that way it had the stick had something to kind of hold on to or you know hot glue to now I did use hot glue for this you probably want to use like E6000 something like that but honestly hot glue seemed to work and I use gorilla hot glue so what I did was you did ha you do have to put a generous amount of hot glue in there and then just douse it and just put as much hot glue as you think is necessary then what I did to give it extra support was add tumbling tower blocks to around the stick kind of like boxing it in and that way it just helped keep it up now my stick was completely bent and you're gonna see that you know at the end when you see the final reveal now I want to warn you these angles are very rough <laughs> they're very I'm doing this in my basement which is a mess so I apologize about that but this was just the only way that I could record it so you could see what I was doing Once I felt that I had enough support on uh, the clay pot with the tumbling tower blocks, I went ahead and took a child size luau skirt from Hobby Lobby and I am just going to start wrapping it around starting at one end and just making sure that it covers. Now if I were to do this again and I still might go back and do this, I would have gotten two of these skirts just to make it a little thicker. It worked but I just think that it, it could use another skirt because what I had to do was actually bring a lot of it to the front so the in the back the clay pot is obvious like you can see it and so that's why I think that I might add another luau skirt um, in the future but I just wrapped and wrapped and wrapped and hot gluing as I go and just made sure that the end of the little rope there that the um, skirt is tied onto ends up in the back. But you can see I'm kind of fluffing it too to make sure that all of my uh, raffia is in the front and that way, you know, it covers that clay pot in the front. Once that was all wrapped, I decided to take this nautical rope that I got from the Dollar Tree and just wrap it around the top where that string is from the uh, luau skirt. Next, I'm gonna go in with a mixture of brown paint and black paint and just dirty up the raffia. And then this is where my phone actually ran out of memory and it stopped recording, so I apologize. So now I'm gonna jump to the next part of this DIY. 
but don't worry like I said you're gonna see it all at the end so now what I'm going to do is take this little sign from the Dollar Tree I'm gonna rip off the stand on the back and then I'm gonna give it one coat of white chalk paint now I am going to go back and paint this black but I just thought that I could um, cover it first with white chalk paint since it's a little thicker and it would hide the words better Next, I took this wooden arrow, again, from the Dollar Tree, and I am going to paint this arrow black. Lastly, I'm going to take this sign from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to take one of those little arrows and I'm going to paint it black. However, this one should have been white. So you now, okay, now I realized it was supposed to be white. So I'm simply just painting over it, which you know what? It's fine. I love how the white covered the black because I still let some of that black show through and I liked how that how that looked and then I'm going to go back to that white sign and paint that one black so now I have two big black arrows and then that skinny small white arrow now I cut out the words sleepy hollow Elm Street and Salem from my Cricut and I'm going to apply each little street I guess, or location on each of the arrows. Now, if you don't have a Cricut, that's okay. You can use stickers. You can use a stencil. You can use rub on transfers. There are so many different options uh, as, as alternatives to a cutting machine. So don't think because you don't have one, you can't do this. You And you can even handwrite. I just definitely don't like my handwriting. So that was not happening. <laughs> All right, so now we need to make these dirty and rough these up. So for the white arrow, I just went ahead and dry brush some black paint around the perimeter. And I'm really focusing on those corners there. And then I'm going to lightly brush over the word as well, just to kind of doll down that orange. Next, I'm going to take some uh, antique wax that I dipped a baby wipe in and I'm just going to sm kind of smear it all over the arrow especially on the letters on the white letters so that way it just looks kind of dirty and I'm going to do this for the Sleepy Hollow and the Elm Street signs then I went ahead and took some white paint and I'm going to dry brush around the edges of these arrows now once the dry the paint was dry I went back over the white paint with the antique wax and it looked like that the edges had been sanded down so it really made it a super cool effect and I really loved how it looks Real quick, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to my YouTube channel. If you love all things home decor and DIYs, you came to the right place. I want to thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you love all of these ideas. And don't worry, I have many more to come in the future as well. So definitely hit that subscribe button so we can hang out more often and turn on those notifications so you get notified when I upload the new videos. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like what you see that way YouTube will show you more of what I post again thanks for stopping by and let's continue on with these spooktacular DIYs So once all of my signs were done, now it's just simply time to hot glue them on my stick. And again, I want to apologize about this angle here. There was just no great place to do it. <laughs> so I am just hot gluing them kind of just, you know, topsy-turvy, kind of crazy. And I'm going to go ahead and do them in different directions, kind of at an angle. And I am just dousing this stick with 
a hot glue. Now you can use wood glue, that would work too, but I do go back and kind of reinforce each sign on the back of it as well. Next, I'm going to take some fairy lights and I am just going to start at the top and wrap it in between each one of the signs going all the way down, including around the broom part of my broom as well. And this is a really cool standing broomstick directional sign for my front porch and the reason why I used the, a clay pot was to weigh it down so it didn't get knocked over because it was pretty heavy but stay tuned because you'll see the whole thing at the end. For the fourth DIY, I am going to make a sign for over my coffee bar. So I took one of these longer black signs, but I really liked the size of this love sign right here. So I am just using it to measure. Now this is one of those projects that started one way and then went in a completely different direction. The reason why I have two boards there is because I originally was using two boards to make a bigger sign, but you're gonna see a little bit later in the project that I end up just going down to the one side. But to go ahead and cut this down, I'm just using my straight edge and uh, my knife to score it and then you can see that I just bend it back and forth a few times and it'll just snap now You do have to kind of put some pressure uh, Into your cuts and it should break uh, pretty easily once you've scored it enough so then once I go ahead and break it off I am going to just take my knife and kind of clean up the edges now i don't really care if the edges aren't perfect because this is going to be like a spooky sign anyways and i wanted it to look sanded around the edges anyways so i am just doing the best i can <clears throat> but once i have the majority of it cut off i am going to take my sanding block and i'm going to sand around the rough edge but if some of that brown is showing through, I am totally okay with that. In fact, I want it to. I even took sandpaper and went around the perimeter of the black board to rough the edges, all the edges up. Next, I'm going to take this sign from the Dollar Tree and again by using my knife, I'm going to go ahead and score the bottom because I just want these potions. So then I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. Now, this is where the project started to change a little bit and I'm going to show you kind of where. So I do end up cutting each one of those potions in, into individual pieces, So, but you'll see that in just a little bit, but I don't want to jump ahead of myself. Now from my Cricut, I went ahead and cut out uh, the words Witch's Brew, and then I did Served Fresh Open Daily. Now this actually is the part where everything started changing because this is when I decided to just go ahead and use uh, just that top board right there. So in a minute, you're gonna see me break off the bottom board, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and apply all of my words. So now that I broke off that bottom board, now I have to go in with my sandpaper again and rough up the this bottom edge because this was glued together to the other board. So now what I'm gonna do is just take a brush and dry brush my black paint over the orange words to dull them down just like we did in the first DIY. I want this to be fun, but I kind of want this to be spooky as well. And I think that this is the perfect way to do it. It just kind of dulls down that brightness of the orange. So now I'm gonna go back to those potion bottles. And like I said, I did end up 
cutting these all individually. And to do this, again, I just used my knife. And then I'm going to take that sanding sponge and I'm going to sand down the rough edge. And then to kind of cover that a little bit, I'm going to take my black paint and I'm just going to paint around the edges of each one of my potion bottles after they are individually cut out. And I did this for all four of them. Now it's time to assemble our sign. So all I'm gonna do is hot glue two of the potion bottles on each side of my sign. Now I did kind of offset them and they are hanging over the side just a little bit, but I really loved how this came out. Now I did switch up these bottles a little bit, which you'll see in the final reveal, but it was one of those things where I turned off the camera and just stared at it, thinking something didn't look right, and then just went ahead and fixed it. But uh, I, like I, I stated earlier, I love this sign and I cannot wait to hang it over my coffee bar. So this first DIY was actually inspired by Candy over on Facebook in this Dollar Tree group that I am a part of, so I definitely wanted to give her credit. But when I saw these Mrs. Claus or Santa Claus gloves, I knew I wanted to give it a shot. So I picked up two of these gloves from the Dollar Tree, and of course they are in the kitchen section, the oven mitts, and I started off by cutting off all the tags. Now I should have went ahead and cut off the little hangers too, um, I just didn't think about it, but uh, you can if you want. Then I went ahead and got this little dust mop head thing, I don't even know, duster, and uh, that also came from the Dollar Tree. Now, I cut mine in half and realized after the fact that I don't think the original poster candy did. And if you can help it, I would not suggest cutting it because this shredded so bad. And so uh, I would not, I would just leave it as one and just put one on each if I could make a suggestion. But after I was done cutting them in half, I then wrapped it around the top of the glove and once I figured out where I wanted to place the fur, I went ahead and hot glued it down. Now, I did use a generous amount of hot glue because obviously I want the fur to stay on. Now, one of these did not go all the way around the top of my glove, so I pulled it as tight as I can. Even if it folded over a little bit, that's okay, but I'm going to show you how I filled the holes on the sides. But just for now, go ahead and hot glue it to the top. Now, also, as you can see, I am hot gluing it down so that a little bit of it sticks up, so it's at the top of my glove. Now I am going to take any of that those pieces that fell out fell off and I'm going to fill in the holes. Then I just add some hot glue and pinch the two ends together. So I'm just kind of using the fur that was already there to go ahead and fill in the rest of the gloves. But like I said, as you can see the this shredded and shedded uh, a lot. So if you can help it, just do one per glove. All right, next I'm gonna take this sign from the Dollar Tree because I just wanted this piece right here. And we're gonna go ahead and make those tags. Now I believe the tags she got actually were ornaments from the Dollar Tree, so if you find those ornaments, just skip this entire step and you can just use those ornaments and this DIY will be that much easier. But because I did not have those, I am going to go ahead and cut this in half by using my knife. And I just scored it a bunch of times and kind of flapped it back and forth until it finally broke off. Then once I had it in half, I'm going to trim it down, kind of clean up the edges, and then sand all of it. Next, I'm going to take a baby wipe and some Waverly Antique Wax, and I'm just simply going to faux stain the back of these little tags. Now, at first I start off light, and then you're gonna see that I go in a little darker, but you do whatever you love. If rustic isn't your thing and you don't wanna do the faux wood, then paint them white, paint them red, paint them green, paint them purple. <laughs> what if you do whatever you like. And I'm gonna do this for both. Thank you. 
Now, because I knew that I was going to be cutting out a decal on my Cricut and using vinyl, I know that the vinyl does not like to stick to Waverly Antique Wax or stain, so I went ahead and put Mod Podge over both of my tags before putting this decal on. And I think that that seemed to help. It did for this one, and then the other one I had some troubles with, so I don't know what the deal with that one was. But um, either way, I got both of my words down, holly jolly. But I did go over both of them with Mod Podge again because I didn't really trust that they were going to stick down. After those dried, I went ahead and just positioned these how I liked and I wanted it to look like one was hanging lower than the other so I went ahead and hot glued them in to place just to kind of tack them down and then I'm going to take some twine and I'm going to make a hanger for them. Now I kind of did this in a weird way. What I would suggest is actually tying a knot at the top because it's easier for you to glue on your stock or on the mitt. I got it to work, but I would just suggest putting a knot somewhere at the top of that little loop. Next, I'm going to take this greenery stem that I got from Dollar Tree. It was just in my stash. I'm really trying to use what I have before I go out and buy a bunch of Christmas crafting uh, things or supplies. So I'm just going to make a little greenery bunch with this, but I do recommend, I don't know why I didn't. Um, to gluing your tags down before you do the greenery uh, it would just make life easier I don't know why this is this project really is easy but I, I just complicated things <laughs> story of my life anyways after that I'm just going to put a bunch of berries now uh, the original poster candy she had I think it was like holly and ivy or something like that um, it was definitely a different stem, but I didn't have that. So again, I was just using what I had and I'm just kind of picking out berries and filling in holes. I don't mind glitter at Christmas time, but the, if this isn't your vibe, then you can definitely switch it up. Then I just added a small little twine bow just to kind of break up all the berries and to make it a little bit more rustic. Next, I'm going to go in with this glittery ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I'm basically going to sandwich it it in where the mitt is open so you can see that I glued it down and now I'm going to glue down the open part of the mitt where you would put your hand now I'm gonna cut a little bit more off or the end and then I'm going to do the same thing and this is going to make our hanger for our little Santa gloves or Mrs. Claus I'm gonna call them Mrs. Claus because I feel like Mrs. Claus would be the one to use them so after the hangers were on, I went ahead and just tacked down the um, tags to the glove. And then you are going to see that I actually hot glue the gl gl one glove <laughs> to the bottom glove. And after that, this little DIY is complete. And I think they're so cute. And thank you to Candy for the great idea. All right, DIY number two, I went to the Dollar Tree and I picked up two of these little battery operated lights. Now, I am going to be hot gluing those peppermints on, but I know that hot glue won't stick to this waxy texture, so I'm going to go ahead and hot glue some ribbon around the bottom just to have something to glue on. Now, this ribbon is thin, so I am going to actually do three strips of this ribbon going up because I'm not covering this whole candle. I'm just covering like the bottom part of it. And so I'm just going to do three strips. Now, when you glue these down, you want to glue the ribbon to the ribbon. You don't want to put hot glue on the actual candle because, like I said, it's not going to stick. So when you hot glue it, just hot glue the ends together. Now, yes, I am using real peppermints. I used real peppermints in some DIYs like two years ago, and it worked out fine. So I feel like this will be okay. Plus, they smelled really good. All right, so I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. I started off by stacking the peppermints one on top of the other and making them very organized. So you can see they're just going to go right next to each other. 
right, you know, just one on top and one next to the other. Then I was looking at it and I'm like, mm, I don't like how uniform this look. So then I ended up popping them, those off and I started staggering all of them. So I just kind of, you know, place them. You'll see. But, you know, there's there are holes either way you do it because these peppermints aren't, um, you know, that small. But you're just going to have to decide which way you like it better. Do you like them nice and clean and organized and, you know, just uniform or do you like them kind of whimsical and just kind of everywhere and this way the whimsical way is the way that I decided to go so you'll see what it looks like but let me know down, down in the comments what kind of style you like better so I just went ahead and just started gluing these all down all the way around my candle now you do only want to put the hot glue in the middle of the peppermint because if it gets on the red it does bleed a little bit and you know if it does it does it's okay it just makes it more festive <laughs> in my opinion but I just went ahead and covered all the way around the ribbon on the candle So my coffee bar for Christmas is peppermint themed and I know exactly where I'm going to put this on the coffee bar, but I needed two. <laughs> so I went ahead and did the same thing to another one of those candles. Now this may not be your style and that's okay. You can stop right here at the peppermint, but I wanted to add some glitz and just cuteness to this. So I am going to paint on some Mod Podge and then I am going to douse this with glitter. Now I would actually recommend using spray adhesive. That's what I used a few years ago to make all my gingerbread DIYs. Um, I just did not have any, but the Dollar Tree does sound, uh, sell some, but I just went around this entire candle and then I even filled in the holes where the ribbon was peeking through and it really did help fill in those gaps. Now, in hindsight, I should have actually done a row at the bottom going all the way around and then kind of offset the next row so if you're going to attempt this craft that's what I would do and then just work your way up that's what I should have done <laughs> but I still think that they turned out really fun and I used every peppermint I had so there is a gap in the back of the second one but that's okay because I'll just point it towards the back <laughs> So after I did the one candle, I went ahead and did the second, and I loved the little touch this added. I do think that it made it more festive and fun, and like I said, it helped fill in the gaps, but again, if this is not your thing, then you can skip it, no big deal. But look how pretty these came out. I cannot wait to display them on my coffee bar. Now this third DIY is in my top two favorite DIYs. So I have this little rolling pin sign that I actually got from Dollar General and as you can see I was showing you that one of my ends actually broke off. No worries, we are going to fix that. But for now, I'm going to take the hanger off of it that included staples and I'm going to peel off the sticker. Now, because there was some glue residue still left on my sign, I'm just going to sand it down. And I'm also gonna sand over the holes where the staples were. Next, I'm going to give this entire thing one good coat of Waverly chalk paint in the color white. And I'm sorry, I do everything except for the handles. Next, I'm going to take my red paint and I'm going to paint over the red, but look at this, all of it came out. Uh, this paint is so old and when I squeeze it, it just all came flowing out. So try not to do that. Now, if you have chalk paint, you probably could get away with just one coat, maybe two, but I had to do several because all I had was acrylic. So if you look at the handle at the top, the one that's broken, you can see that there's kind of like a wood effect there and I really loved that. So I decided I'm actually going to cut off the other handle so I can use the front of it because again, we painted the back so this is facing the wrong way. 
So while I was at it, I did go ahead and clean up the edges. Now, of course, I should have done this before I painted, but I didn't think about, you know, cutting the handle off. So I am just going to try to make it as flat and smooth as I can so when I glue the handles back on, they lay flush. Now, I tried to cut as close as I could. I did not get it perfect, which means they did not lay flush, but again, I'm going to cover that, so no worries there. All right, now after I got those cut off, it's time to hot glue them on. So I, I did put a generous amount of hot glue. It kind of worked, but I'm going to show you how I added even more support to this. And I did end up flipping the rolling pin over because I wanted it to be flush to the front of the sign, if that makes sense. So I glued it so they were towards the front. I hope that makes sense. Next, I took one of these mini popsicle sticks. I broke it in half and now I'm just going to hot glue it so that the handle and the back of the sign are connected and this gave it a lot more support. So I'm really happy I did that because I could tell that it was much, much stronger. So as you can see, there is a little gap there because of the hot glue, but again, we're going to cover that. So then I added this cute decal that says North Pole Bakery and in my kitchen I do a gingerbread theme. So I thought I would make a cute gingerbread theme rolling pin. So to of course go along with that I'm going to add some icing by using some puffy paint. I went all the way around the red part of my rolling pin and I kind of did some drip marks at the top and kind of made it a little wiggly and kind of layered it uh, thick on the corners. Now I'm going to go in with this super cute gingerbread man that I actually got from Hobby Lobby. But remember, all of their Christmas stuff is 50% off, so it really was very inexpensive. So I went ahead and cut the hanger off, and I peeled that candy cane off. Candy cane off, And then I am just using my little knife. I stuck it in there because now I'm going to get out the little metal hanger because we're not going to need it. Now we're going to perform some surgery. Unfortunately, we had to cut the arms off of our little gingerbread man. So I went as close to like his body as possible. Now that first one was easy to do with scissors, but this was a weird angle here. So I ended up using my really sharp uh, little knife to get this arm off. Now they were easy to cut off no matter what uh, um, method you use, the scissors or the knife, but it was just the angle that was throwing me off. So I do go in and cut off the feet too. I was going to do something there, but I didn't end up using them, but you can cut them off or not. It's totally up to you. This DIY, di, di, <laughs> I cannot speak today. This DIY will work uh, with the feet on too. All right, so now I did peel off the little bow and I am going to go in and peel off all of uh, his clothes and the buttons because I, re I did try uh, hot gluing this on but realized it popped up too much. So I actually needed just the body of my gingerbread man. Next, I'm going to put some hot glue on his body, and then I am going to put the rolling pin right on his like belly part, right there, so the head is in the middle. Now, I did off camera move the head up a little bit, but so you can do that too. But then I'm gonna take the little hands and I'm going to hot glue them to the front of the sign to make it look like he's peeking over. Only problem is that the one hand kind of um, laid over my letters. So all I did, simple, uh, easy fix, was peeled up my letters. Then I positioned the hand, and then I put my letters back on. And I wanted to mention, too, if you don't have a Cricut, you can just use regular stickers for this. Uh, Hobby Lobby has a variety of different fonts and styles of stickers, and uh, Dollar Tree has a good variety too. So just because you don't have a Cricut doesn't mean you can't make uh, these DIYs. So I'm just going to place all of my letters back on of pole, and then once I decide where I want my little hands, I'm going to glue them down. Look how cute this is looking already. Isn't that adorable? I love that. Now, shockingly, I have a bunch of gingerbread decor, but not a rolling pin, so this is perfect. 
All right, then I'm gonna take that bow that I actually took off of, it was a bow tie, and now it's a girl gingerbread, <laughs> man, woman. <laughs> Then I'm going to take this little set from Hobby Lobby and had like these gingerbread cookies and I'm just going to hot glue one on either side. Now you could stop there or I went that extra step and I'm painting on some Mod Podge and then I'm going to douse this with some glitter. I just feel like Christmas time, especially gingerbread, it just... I don't know, it just makes it more fun and festive, and I just think it's so cute. But you absolutely do not have to do the glitter. I know that a lot of people really don't love the glitter, so you can absolutely skip it. Now, I did want to Mod Podge over these letters, uh, especially because I pulled the pole word off. So I just decided to Mod Podge over the entire middle part and then just sprinkle some glitter over that as well. Now I did get a little too glittery over the words so I just went ahead and brushed some of that off until I got it to look how I liked. But look how cute this is so far. Oh my gosh, as I was making this I like was out loud saying, oh my gosh it's so cute, oh my gosh it's so cute. All right, now to cover those gaps, I'm actually going to take some of this red and white twine uh, and I'm just going to just wrap it around several times over at the handle and then I'm going to create a small little bow and just hot glue that down. And I'm gonna do this on both sides. So this is so cute how it is, but we do have to make a stand for it. So I have these like little uh, blocks and I you can use tumbling tower blocks. I just couldn't find mine at this moment. So I just went ahead and glued a bunch of blocks together and then I'm just going to glue it to the back of my rolling pin and that's it. Now I am gluing it to like his little legs here, but when I actually take him off in a minute or her off in a minute and move her up, then I was able to glue directly on the rolling pin itself. Now I don't think I do that on camera, but that is what I did and look how stinking cute. Well, there you have it, 23 of my favorite DIYs from this year. Don't forget to click my photo to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and if you love this video, check this one out right here. I bet you'll love that one too. Thank you so much for joining me, and until I see you again, I'll craft with you soon. Bye!